Hello, and greetings from beautiful Antioch, California. It's a, a suburb of uh, the San Francisco Bay Area. It is kind of a dump, though the area where I'm at, closer to the San Joaquin River, is a uh, kind of a beaten down industrial area and is more uh, tolerable than other areas of uh, Antioch. You know, like where you got the tract houses and the strip malls and all that shit. Anyway, what I'm going to show you today is... Uh, well, it's a, it's a beautiful area, at least what's left of it. And uh, what's left of it is only crumbs. Uh, we're going to go uh, see a rare plant that only occurs in this area, as well as some sand dunes that were formed uh, by glaciers uh, carving and grinding real hard on the Sierra Nevada uh, 140,000 years ago. So the glaciers carved on the uh, mountains over there. If you look over at the uh, hideous and depressing power plant, and uh, they carved on the mountains on the Sierra Nevada, and then, of course, all the uh, sands and shit uh, washed down the river uh, to where we are now, and it formed the, the dune habitat that I'm going to go show you. So here we go. So anyways, the dunes that used to be here stretched for a couple miles in either direction, and they got as high as 120 feet tall. You know, just beautiful dune habitat which, with a bunch of endemic plants on it, you know, to make you feel less homicidal, less like you want to die. You know, just going out to the world. And if you feel like that, by all means, don't be ashamed, you know. Uh, just, uh, you know, don't be afraid to voice it. It's a perfectly reasonable response to the modern day. Anyway, the dunes were destroyed in the early 1900s. And this place has basically gotten fucked into a coma ever since. You know, they were using uh, the sand here to make uh, bricks to rebuild San Francisco after it got demolished in a 1906 quake. Uh, they had a uh, sewage treatment plant, you know, a shit plant here for a while, too basically gotten fucked that's why most of what you're looking at now is all highly invasive non-native species so not all non-natives non are invasive but all invasives are non-native good example is this uh bromus right here they call it rip gut brome because the seeds are have kind of a well you know when you get them stuck in your goddamn socks and your shoes and what the shit i'm probably brought over from europe or northern africa but it uh you know, the texture of the seeds is pretty uh, rigid and barbed, and it's very obnoxious to get stuck in your clothing. You don't want that to happen. Of course, you got your old friend, the rhodium, over here, geranium family, nasty invasive. In the desert, they don't get that too big. But here, where they get a little bit more moisture, it's a little bit more milder, milder of a climate, at least in the, the winter, they can get uh, pretty big. So, you, you know, I've seen some of these goddamn rhodiums, you know, two or three feet tall. Yay, hi. But, uh, you know, struggling to come up amidst this, you still have some of the cool natives over here. Let's see if we can find one to show you. Yeah, so, this is basically just a whole sea of bullshit. A whole sea of that invasive bromus. You got uh, got some brassica over there. You got this guy, Vicia velosa, an invasive member of the pea family. You know, doesn't doesn't get too bad here. Okay, doesn't form monocultures here. I don't know about anywhere else, but it doesn't form monocultures here. Here's that goddamn brassica. But the bromus is really big, because that's what'll get stuck in your, your pet's noses and shit. Oh, there's some tweaker walking by the train tracks. Doesn't surprise me, we are in Antioch. Anyway, uh, where's where's the other one? Oh yeah, this here, you get the brassica. Brassica's a pain in the ass, of course. Easy to rip out, though. But you gotta be careful, because this brassica actually looks like one of the rare plants that we got here, which I'm gonna show you. This guy's a big fucking rare, rare one, too. It's a big goldie. But I'm gonna show you this Ariagonum first. So this is a rare Ariagonum. This is Ariagonum nudum, variety psychic cola, and it's only known from this area. It's a perennial buckwheat, perennial member of the Polygonaceae. See, they got the little flags and shit up right there. You like the flags? Huh? Kind of, uh, kind of feels kind of festive. Anyway, perennial. You can see here's last year's inflorescences. Okay, they're done. And here's the new ones. They're just going off, okay? Ariagonum, of course, diverse genus, a lot of nice species in it. A lot of uh, radiation in Western North America. And uh, this guy, of course, is a, uh, you know, he's a, this, it's a subspecies, or variety, excuse me, that's only known from this immediate area. Nowhere else in the world. Who knows, uh, who knows when it emerged? You know, how many thousands of years? But uh, it's, uh, again, endemic, uh, endemic to these, this dune area. You know, and it was probably everywhere back in the day when the dunes were still here. And then this guy, this guy, I'll show you the big population over at the dunes, what's left of them. But this is a fucking fantastic plant, okay? It's an evening primrose. That's why none of them are blooming right now, because it's 5 p.m. Okay, give it a couple hours. Look, this guy's opening. You put a time lapse on this guy, right? You get him on camera, he'll open. In three hours, he'll be open. Pollinated by moths at night. 
And this is a, is a perennial. It's a short-lived perennial. This is Onathera deltoides subspecies Howellii. Okay? Look at the goddamn leaves. Okay, evening primrose family. Same family as uh, Epilobiums. You know, you get some of the Epilobium canums down in the desert. And you get uh, the Clarkies. I'll show you some of those real nice, beautiful fucking plants. A lot of diversity in Onagraceae in Central America, too. Some of the fuchsias. Uh, some of the lopezias. You know, they get almost tree-like, hummingbird pollinated, wonderful fucking family. Synapomorphies are four petals, four sepals, and a very distinct stigma. We'll show you one over here when we get over there. So see, it's, you know, it's mostly just, this is all invasive bullshit, okay? You got some Ascholcia californica here, the California poppies. See, there's, they're already mature and they already gone to seed. See the little elongated capsule, okay? But uh, you can restore it. It just takes some work, you know? You know, you got to get that, say you get some high school kids, pay them in beer and pizza, okay? That way you're not breaking any child labor laws, you know? It just, they're, it's all volunteer and get them out here. Teach them what to pick out, teach them what to rip out, what's invasive, what's not. You know, give them a couple hours, you know, that'd be fine. Maybe get the, one of those uh, electric uh, cattle prods for the ones that get lazy. You had this done in no time, so you can restore it, okay? It's not a lost cause against the... Uh, reclaiming uh, ecosystems from the invasives and shit. It's just they got a competitive ed edge because none of the fungi or insects to keep them in check in their home ecosystem 9,000 miles away exist here. Okay, so you got to manage it. You, I've seen it done before. It works. You know, you could take all this shit, all this nasty grass and all the other bullshit and, uh, you know, basically transform it back into what it was 300 years ago. And you just got to manage it still. But, uh, you know, come back and weed. You got to come back and weed every spring. But uh, whatever, you know. Fish and Wildlife ain't been letting people in here to weed because of the whole COVID thing. You might know about that thing. Anyway, uh, anyway, we'll, we'll see. We'll show you what it's like down here where they've done some work on it and made it nice again. Mmm, humans are invasive. There's no such thing as, as invasive species, you fucking xenophobe. Humans are more invasive. Who are you to get to determine who stays and what doesn't, huh? It's like really fucked up. It's like, that's fucking idiotic. Uh, Arguments kind of make me want to throw up in my mouth. So anyway, like I said, there was a sand mining operation here. They were doing uh, work for the bricks. They were making bricks. And so when they had to restore it, this is what they did. They basically dredged the uh, the delta over there, okay, you know, to make it easier for the ships to go to the port of Stockton. You don't want to go to Stockton, I'll tell you that right now. Okay, so they, they did that. They put the dredging material right here. See that? And so now you get all, you know, it's slowly coming back. Still kind of looks like shit. You only got one plant right there. <laughs> but, hey, it's better than nothing. It's better than just a, fields of, a field of weeds. But uh, you can see, it's well-intentioned. Look at the Mount Diablo in the distance. That's real nice. Fish and wildlife is well-intentioned. You got some, uh, what's this, some croton? Some native croton coming up. Of course, you got the erodium. And then you got, uh, looks like they seeded some uh, onathera. They don't need to even the primrose. No flowers yet. Oh yeah. See, look, it's like it's a rhodium on crack. Or I guess uh, a rhodium on uh, some of Alex Jones's supplements, huh? No, never mind. Those, those don't do anything. Anyway, uh, but you can see that's a monster right there. See that? Monster of rhodium. And no one's here, like I said, because they got it shut down because of the COVID. You, you know, they don't want you coming in here and uh, and ripping it out. But here. See, there's more of that uh, evening primrose. Nothing blooming yet. But I want to show you something in the same family, okay? What you call an owner gracious bastard. Real fucking marvelous guy, too. Look at this. This is Clarkia unguiculata. Oh, uh, yeah, there you go. That's nice. Look at that Clarkia flower up close, okay? So you got four petals, eight stamens, four long stamens, four short stamens, and then it's just, where's the style on there? Oh, uh, yeah, there's the style. See that white bulbous thing? You know, typical Onagracious uh, style and stigma right there. Very, very bulbous stigma. Just ready to get that pollen deposited on it. Okay, another synapomorphid I should mention for this family is pollen that occurs in a structure that you will call vicin threads. Okay, it basically looks like cobwebby pollen, where all the grains are kind of stuck together on a strand. Basically, basically, yeah, like I said, you know, pollen threads, basically. So they call them vicin, vicin threads. Which, uh, you know, a couple other plants get them, but it's just a more efficient way of transporting pollen, keeping it together, and if, again, it sticks. To, it seems to stick to the pollinator's legs uh, rather easily. You know, and a lot of Onagraceae have uh, specialist pollinators too. 
It's what, uh, you know, specialist bees. So, like, you get an oligolectic bee. Oligolectic just means it's a specialist. It's adapted to pollinate in one type of uh, flower. You know, as opposed to, like, the European honeybee that's a generalist. But anyway, eight stamens are multiples of four. Typical evening primrose family. Multiples of four. Eight stamens, four petals, four sepals, and then you got that bulbous ass style, the viscid threads, etc. And then you got an inferior ovary, which just means that the ovary... You can see it. it just, it's just—it's uh, basically closer to the axis of the plant than the point where the uh, sepals and petals and other floral parts and shit attach to the uh, the uh, axis of that flower. See? Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, another uh, one of the three endangered plants that grows on the dune system. This is a member of the brassica family. Okay, the kale family, which is you know like the evening primrose family, Onogracyae, uh, has floral parts in a numbers of four, multiples of four. This one also has four petals. Difference is, though, this has superior ovaries. That is, the fruits, i.e. the ovaries, uh, occur above the point at which the petals attach to the goddamn uh, axis of the flower right there. You know, you could see the uh, little peduncles of each flower. And, uh, you know, basically it was peduncle and then petals. Or it should go peduncle, sepals, petals, excuse me. And above that, above the sepals and the petals, are the goddamn fruits. It's got a superior ovary. Evening primrose family has inferior ovary. Anyway, this is Arisimum capitatum, variety angustatum. Okay? Again, it's, it's specialized here. It's adapted to the dunes. It only occurs right here. This variety does at least. Okay? Arisimum capitatum. The species is a little bit more widespread, but this one only occurs here. And it's one of the plants that makes us such a fucking... Nice spot to come, you know, buy nice, fuck around, you know, forget about the, how ugly the world can be. Okay, you only get it at these goddamn dunes. You can see we're actually on the dunes right here now. And again, this is a restoration project, so they had to dump all this shit up here. There's the, there's the Clarkias right there. There's a species of amaranth. Oh, God, how many horrible and utterly tragic jet skiing and motorboat accidents have occurred right in front of us. Do you ever think about stuff like that? I do. It kind of gives me a chuckle. Oh, look at that. Nice view of the construction cranes over there. That's uplifting. Anyway, let's look at this plant right here. Remember the pea family Fabaceae? It's a species of lupin, but this is a fucking... Look, it's a goddamn bush. It's enormous. Typically found growing on sand. This is a lupinus chamasonis. Look at those leaves. Look at how... Look at all silvery and whatnot. Look at those flowers. Oh, yeah. A lot of these seeds won't germinate unless you get a uh, scarification. You know, or you could do a hot water treatment. But the lupins are a great goddamn uh, plant. You know, obviously this one can live for, you know, 10 or 20 years probably, if not longer. Great plant to have around. Let's take a look at the seeds. Just crack the seeds open right there. Take a look at some of them. Oh, yeah, look. They look like little ticks. So, you know, these can, uh, some will germinate after the hot water treatment. Some need a scarification. You can, you know, braid them with sandpaper. And uh, others, uh, you know, might, maybe some of them might just germinate uh, readily. It just depends on uh, the genetic look of the dry, I guess. You know, but uh, basically they create a soil seed bank. They'll be in the soil for a while. And then, uh, you know, at some point, maybe next year, maybe five years down the line, they go off. But this one's a fucking, like I said, a wonder. Look how, look at that, that trunk down there. Perfect shrub. This would be nice. You know, get these in some of those, those bleak strip mall landscaping instead of the, uh, camphor trees and whatever, uh, tacky shit they got in there, huh? Oh, uh, yeah, here's a nice one. Here's a good one. Croton californicus. Okay. Mostly these occur in Southern California. This is the northern extent of their range right here. Remember the euphorbia family, the poinsettia family? Look at those flowers. Okay, got that nice, uh, the nice indumentum, that blue fuzz on both sides of the leaf. Bluish colored leaves, obviously adapted to the aridity and the summer dry. Okay, you mostly get this in the deserts, but uh, apparently you get it up here in Antioch, California too, you know, with all the strip malls and the fuck. Actually, northern Antioch's not too bad. They got some good taquerias here, and there's not that much of the bleak track housing. But you go into towards those hills over there, you get more of the... Uh, Bleak, futureless, uh, utterly depressing, and spiritually decrepit track housing. See, you gotta get the high school kids out here and put them to work. There's all the weeds. Actually, this is a native. It's a weedy native. Heterotheca grandiflora. You see this on the uh, on train tracks. You see it all over the place. Pretty good. 
But the bromus and shit, you know, real bad. The visia, that purple pea flower, real bad. Real pain in the ass. Okay? But up here, you got the larger population of some of those, uh, even the primroses. Let's go see. Well, they got, you seen a feral cat. They got the feral cats out here. Probably taking apart the uh, ground bird populations. I got to put that on the coyote hotline. Get the coyotes out here, you know? They'll take care of it. Public service. So anyway, you can see, you know, it's kind of bleak. You know, but depending on where you live, this is as good as it gets in terms of, you know, getting a break from uh, the human misery. The human tumor, as I call it. You know, so you got to take what you can get. And if you got places like this near you, why don't you, you know, see if you can help out with the restoration or some shit. Nothing you can do to, uh, you know, make yourself a little bit. Yeah, basically, it chills you, chills you out like a cocktail, okay? Except some of us can't drink cocktails anymore because we get a little rowdy and aggressive. You know, we're already kind of like that anyway. So you put some booze in us, and the next thing you know, it's a... Uh, Shit's hitting the fan. So anyway, this is, you know, you need something to cool yourself out. Why don't you just you learn to start propagating native plants near you. Look for uh, whatever little crumbs of uh, the original habitat are left. See if you can get involved. You know, rip out some weeds. Learn some shit. Okay, talk to some of the people that work there. See if you can get involved and help out and shit. And then just start growing your own stuff. Transform your yard into a fucking, uh, you know, a sanctuary. Right, then you won't maybe need that cocktail. You won't need as many. All right, let's go look at a primrose. Oh, yeah, there you go. Okay, so you got to be careful of common names because there's primroses, the genus Primula, and then there's these, which are uh, evening primroses, okay? Completely different family, all right? Uh, evening primroses, you know, you, well, I just, you know, don't really, just don't call them that. Don't call them a common name. I prefer onogracious bastards, okay? And it could, of course, refer to anything in the family. The Lopezias, the Fuchsias down in Central America, a lot of nice plants in Onogracia. You get up below Epilobiums in the deserts, you get the Clarkias, the Camisonias, wonderful shits, okay? Wonderful shits, onogracious bastards. Anyway, up here we could see uh, some of the old uh, last year's uh, fruits. Now these are the fruits right there, those are the ovaries. Okay, and you can see this is what they look like fresh. Just looks like a stem, kind of indistinct. But again, it's got the, it's a four-parted capsule. You got four carpels there all fused together. Okay, look at the leaves. Look at it. All fuzzy and shit, real dentate. Look at it. It's a beautiful goddamn plant, and it's perfectly adapted to this dry, windy ass doing environment. It gets 115 degrees here in the summer. It gets hot as balls. It's not a place you want to be. Up oh, motorboat disaster. I can hear it. It's not a place you want to be in July, okay? Maybe at night. Maybe at night, you know? But uh, it's it's really fucking hot and dry and brutal out here. But again, these plants are adapted to it. They can take it. They're perennials. They're kind of short-lived perennials. Anyway, so there's that uh, fruit. The flower's already fallen off. This one's still going. And there's last year's fruits, okay? So they break off in four segments, split open like that. Almost kind of looks like a, there's a species down in the desert that's a, they call it a bird, bird cage, even in primrose. I think it's actually just another one of these, another deltoides. You can see that almost looks like a damn bird cage right there. It's, it's last year's, uh, last year's plant. Okay. Splits open. You got tons of seeds in, inside. Dozens of tiny seeds about the size of a poppy seed. Very, very prolific seed or very efficient. And uh, again, look at all the hairs and shit on the stems and the leaves. A beautiful plant. And there we go, there's a flower open. Again, multiples of four. You got four petals, you got eight stamens. You got a style and a stigma, and a stigma's got four lobes to it, okay? Look at those long ass anthers just dangling, teetering on top of those uh, filaments. Okay, smells fucking delightful, all right? And they're very easy to grow. You got four sepals down there too, of course. Very easy to grow, and like I said, most of them tend to open at night. There's a bunch that are just seeming to go off over there. They'll be open in an hour or two. And again, you see white flowers, especially big white ones, especially if you're in the tropics, you got to figure it's most likely pollinated by, uh, you know, a, a nocturnal animal, either moths or bats, you know, all the cat, a lot of cacti, a lot of those columnar cacti have white flowers because they're pollinated by bats at night. You want to make those flowers visible to the pollinators. But again, this is a moth. And let's see if we can actually get any of those uh, Vissen threads uh, live on camera with this full frontal uh, shot. Oh, yeah. See that pollen? You already got the pollen stuck to that uh, stigma. So somebody already pollinated this guy. Dropped it off right there. You got those pollen grains. They're germinating right now as we speak, if they haven't already. And look at that. It sticks on there. It just looks like goddamn uh, like cobwebs. The cobwebby pollen.
fucking great plant. You come out here at sunset, and you just see them all. Sun's going down over there. Okay, you just see them all with the sunlight coming through them. It's fucking beautiful. Huh? It make you want to hit somebody in the head with a brick a little bit less. Oh, there's the BNSF line. Stands for Better Not Start a Family. At least that's what I've heard. I had a couple friends who work for them. They're not so bad, you know? I mean, they're all kind of bad, but they're, they're not so bad. How do you like that? Spend your life sitting in a locomotive eating fucking corn nuts and Whataburger and not moving for 12 hours a day. It's, a, it's what you call a sedentary lifestyle. And then you die a couple years after you retire. How about that? You know, it's hard to believe that all this sand is just the, basically the Sierra Nevadas, you know, being grinded down by a glacier and then transported by the river, the downhill, you know, en route to the ocean just being dropped off there. Yeah, you could thank the glaciers for this. You know, just another shining example of how geology ties into botany so well. If it weren't for the glaciers, the dunes wouldn't be here, and if it weren't for the dunes, None of these plants would have speciated, uh, you know, out of, uh, they would never would have diverged from whatever ancestral species they came out of. Hey, it looks like granitic sand. How about that? Got a lot of quartz in there, too. Very high silica. Anyway, so I got for you tonight. I'm going to go uh, hit a taco truck if there's any that are uh, open during uh, the pandemic. And, uh, let me get a cup of coffee and I'm going to go uh, fuck off. All right, take it easy. Go fuck yourself. Bye.